All right, guys. So I've discovered something. Um, I went to play with that first stage regulator again to figure out, you know, why am I getting such a large extreme spread when I got a double regulated gun? And I noticed something. Okay, now, uh, since I've been air gunning, I've only used a uh, refrigerated dryer. That's what that is right there. That's a refrigerated dryer. Um, so basically, you dry the low pressure air before you put it under high pressure and you run it through a filter and everything to get the air dry you get the, the the large particles of water out through the filtration and then you run it through a filter uh, uh, refrigerated dryer to dry that air and that's how i've always uh dried my air uh, of course after that it will go through the Alter Rose booster, which has desiccant balls. And my desiccant balls, uh, for three years, I've never had to bake them because they've never pulled any uh, moisture out of the air. Now, I just bought the GX9 or the GX pump. And it uses desiccant, a pre-stage desiccant. So you pull that low pressure air up in through desiccant which should dry it out and then you pump it down and that's how you're drying your air now here's what i wanted to let you guys know because i know a lot of you guys use those uh high pressure air compressors and things like that to get your air and you use those desiccant dryers now i want to uh just go over this and show you i was also after my desiccant using this I know a lot of you guys use this and when I would open this up after I pumped the air in it was dry the filter still dry everything in this was also dry right and some of you guys might have noticed that when you're doing it now the thing is you got a dew point so when that air is heated up it's above the dew point the bottle is hotter everything's hotter right and then you know let's say you you pump that up and you leave it in the garage or something for a couple of days and that air cools down and it hits a dew point so as long as that air is hot no there's no water in it you know the water is um it's vapor and then once it dries, I mean, once it once the pressure and temperature come down a little bit, that's when it hits the dew point and all of a sudden you get water. So I was going to work on that regulator. Uh, I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna take that regulator back up to 90 where the factory is at. And I open that bottle up, right? And when I pull this bottle off under pressure, I don't know if you guys will see this, but what you can see on the tip of that is water. There's water droplets. Because the desiccant system does not work like you guys think it works. Now I've been working on air compressors for a long time and what I know is that desiccant, the air needs to sit in that desiccant for uh, a short time frame. And then it can dry it out real good, but just pulling it through there real quick and then pumping it into a bottle or pumping it into whatever you're pumping it into, that desiccant doesn't get time to fully dry that air like you think that you're drying it. So I got water in my bottle. I got water in my regulator. I got water in my plenum. And I've got water in my second stage regulator because I was using that hand pump. 
the water isn't apparent until this thing cools down. And the same thing is happening to you guys' bottles uh, when you try to dry high pressure air immediately without it sitting in a tank Daddy. full of desiccant. So that's what goes on, guys. Uh, you get water in the long run. Where did mommy go? Once you cool down. Uh, Give me, mommy. <laughs> Give me, daddy. Yeah, you're excused. So that's how it goes. That's what goes on, guys. And that's probably why I'm getting an extreme spread. I've got water. It may be flashing off, not flashing off in all my regulators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my bottle from now on, which I know has refrigerated air. And I know that air can get down to at least, uh, at least zero to negative uh, temperatures before it will, any moisture that, that is left can become apparent then maybe you'll get a couple of drops of moisture coming out of that but because it goes through desiccant afterwards maybe even that little bit of moisture that was left in there is absorbed out through desiccant that's in the Alteros booster so I'm, that's probably why I get such good results on uh, on the MK2 setup that I was using that never had anything but the cleanest air in it that come from my labs and it's always been a refrigerated air dryer refrigerated air dryer that was dried in the low pressure phase so I got low pressure dry air that goes in and gets through the Alteros booster and gets boosted up to a high pressure and put in a bottle and now I'm trying to dry high pressure air oh. through this and the hand pump. And I know that's the air that's not dry because the air coming from my bottle, I know it's dry. I've never had any water in my MK2. And here I have a brand new MK3. And I tried that desiccant. And now I know for a fact and I can tell you guys for a fact, desiccant does not work. Do not use desiccant to try to filter your high pressure air because, I mean, it's probably 70 degrees in my garage, if not hotter. And I'm hitting dew point in my bottle. You know, so... When I pump that air in there, it's hot. You know, it's probably around 100, 160 degrees. And then once it cools down to 70, it hits the dew point. The water in that air condenses and I have water in my bottle. All right. Uh, the desiccant is pulling some of the moisture out. I mean, I don't have a ton of water, but I've got water in a bottle. And once that bottle cools down, there's water condensing out of the air. It's hitting a dew point that's above uh, 70 degrees. You know, it might be hitting its dew point at 90. I don't know. But it's definitely hitting a dew point in this bottle and uh, making water. So, what do you do? Now I gotta shoot all the water out of this bottle. I gotta start putting dry air in it and uh, just try to dry it out through shooting it. The other thing about this kind of water is it's corrosive. You know, um, this condensate water is corrosive. It's a water that is uh, it's so pure that it pulls carbonic acid out of the air and becomes acidic. So it'll rust any metal parts a lot faster than regular water would because of that, the acidic nature of condensate water. Uh, 
I mean, I know this gun doesn't have a lot of metal parts in it. The barrel's not even metal. So I shouldn't have to worry about too much rust because almost everything is aluminum in this gun. But I'm sure there are some metal parts in here that are getting that corrosive water. Um, now, it'll cause aluminum to pit. So it could cause pitting in your barrel. Uh, I hate that, you know, my brand new gun got that in it. But I caught it fast enough to I know not to use that pump to pump this up anymore. And uh, I should be able to dry it out pretty quick without getting any damage. Any damage. Now, if I had to use this for months like that, yeah. Yeah, I got corrosion going off through this gun by the end. But if I can if I can dry it out, I'll start putting dry air in here and it should dry everything right back out and I can get this this settled and taken care of. But guys, do not trust desiccate to dry your high pressure air. Yeah, it's dry when it's hot. But if you start pulling your bottle off after it's cooled down to whatever your room temperature is, after you've used, pumped it all up and you let that thing settle, you got water. You got water. I got water. I'm using a double filtration and I got water in my bottle. Uh, but on the flip side, I've adjusted it and I, I didn't take it back to, to factory. But right now I'm sitting at 140 and I'm trying get the bottle on here. I'm trying to get it back. I'm trying to get it up to around well no, I'm sitting at 160 right now. So I got it up to 160. Uh, Ernest Rowe said 150. It should be at 150 from the factory. Mine was at 190. And now it's at 160. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it down and see if it it still fluctuates in between. Uh, I loosened up. You know, I just snugged down that first, uh, that set screw that they got on there. I just snugged that down on the regulator screw instead of tightening it down. Um, cause I, I, I seen in my, uh, YouTube comments, a guy said his was the same. It was just, you know, it was snug down. So I just snugged mine's back down instead of putting it on there real tight. Um, and I'm going to see here, I'm going to shoot this all the way down and see if that regulator sits at 160, but I'm pretty sure my extreme spread is because I got water. My extreme spread ain't doing nothing. The gun ain't shooting as good as I would wish for it to shoot. And it's more than likely because I have water in here. <laughs> I'm used to super precision shooting out of my, uh, my, my MK2. I'm spoiled. But I never, ever use, relied on desiccant dryers to dry that air in that gun. So I know that air, um, uh, the dew point is, is under negative temperatures which the gun's never been you know in negative temperatures to where it would it would have water coming out of the dew point now i know you guys see desiccant and desiccant has a very very low dew point um so when you see that you think oh well pff, you know i'm not going to get saturation but what you're not realizing is desiccant filters. I got a lot of compressors where I work and we have desiccant filters. We have refrigerated dryers. This is what I work on. This is what I do. Not for, you know, little stuff, but for big air. I run labs and these labs have to have ultra dry nitrogen and ultra dry air. So we dry nitrogen and we dry air and nitrogen, as you know, it's already pretty dry. Uh, but we run the nitrogen through a desiccant uh, filtration system. And that nitrogen sits in that desiccant awaiting use. Okay? And that's how it's able to dry that nitrogen out. It doesn't just pass straight through. 
it's a it, it's a tank system. It's a big tank where the 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 nitrogen flows slowly through this desiccant as the the other nitrogen is coming in and that's how that works and that's how it's able to dry it but desiccant is a slow drying system it's not a fast drying system like refrigerant and when you refrigerate it's not a system that you can use on high pressure it's a low pressure system so with air we refrigerate we use refrigerant dryers and we dry that air with refrigerant. What's ready? Food. Food ready? Yeah. It's time to eat? Yeah. Oh. All right, guys. Sweet baby, now call me out. It's just time to eat. I got to get everything cleaned up and go eat. But I just wanted you guys to see that. I said a long time ago not to trust desiccant. I seen everybody still using desiccant, so I figured I'd give it a try. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe, you know, in the air gunning, it's, you know, such a little burst of high pressure air that's going through there that the desiccant had enough time to dry it. But now I'm finding out that no, desiccant doesn't work. Desiccant works if you have a big tank and that air or nitrogen slowly gets to sit in that tank and let that moisture be absorbed thoroughly from it. But just pumping straight through desiccant, it doesn't work, y'all. Uh, I got the water that proves it. So uh, don't get caught up like me and end up with water in your system. Or if you already have water in your system, stop relying on desiccant. All right. So I'm gonna get this straightened out and then I'll start testing again and see if uh, I can get my air and extreme spreads and, and spreads where I expected them to be. You know, I expected this to be better than my, my MK2, which only has one regulator. And I mean, I wasn't getting extreme spreads like I'm getting out of this one, but now I know why. All right, y'all, I'm going to end this video on that note. I got to get the moisture cleared up out of this gun, so I'm going to be doing a lot of, I'm glad I got these hollow points. I got some hollow points from Crossman, uh, 7.9 grains. I'll shoot them up uh, to get rid of this air. I'm going to buy some more cheap pellets. Give me some cheap pellets and just shoot them up to get this air and moisture out of my gun. I have to put, you know, dry air will do it. And I can get dry air. It's not a problem. And that's what I'll be using from now on. Uh, I'm going to have to find a way to introduce dry air into that GX pump. And that way, uh, if I can introduce low pressure dry air into the GX pump, then I can use it kind of like the Alter Rose booster just to boost that that already conditioned air into uh, high pressure air. But I gotta figure out a way if I can set some kind of fitting up to go onto the inlet to where I can control what air is going in there, then that pump will be usable. But I mean, as of now, it's just, it'll be an emergency. Uh, shit done hit the fan. Uh, my air tank is empty and I need to eat. And all I have is my air gun and I need to pump it up. That's all that, that GX pump will be good for for me now. I've uh, seen that it, it doesn't dry the air. Have a good weekend.